Welcome, dear friends, to the Crimson Academy's reading of the Advent of Divine Justice. In this section, we'll be reading paragraphs 42 through 44. So great and transcendental is this principle of divine justice, a principle that must be regarded as the crowning distinction of all local and national assemblies in their capacity as forerunners of the Universal House of Justice, that Baha'u'llah himself subordinates his personal inclination and wish to the all-compelling force of its demands and implications. God is my witness, he thus explains. Were it not contrary to the law of God, I would have kissed the hand of my would-be murderer and would cause him to inherit my earthly goods. I am restrained, however, by the binding law laid down in the book and am myself bereft of all worldly possessions. Know thou of a truth, he significantly affirms, these great oppressions that have befallen the world are preparing it for the advent of the most great justice. Say, he again asserts, he hath appeared with that justice wherewith mankind hath been adorned, and yet the people are, for the most part, asleep. The light of men is justice, he moreover states. Quench it not with the contrary winds of oppression and tyranny. The purpose of justice is the appearance of unity among men. No radiance, he declares, can compare with that of justice. The organization of the world and the tranquility of mankind depend upon it. O oh, people of God, he exclaims, that which traineth the world is justice, for it is upheld by two pillars, reward and punishment. These two pillars are the sources of life to the world. Justice and equity is yet another assertion, are two guardians for the protection of man. They have appeared arrayed in their mighty and sacred names to maintain the world in uprightness and protect the nations. Bestir yourselves, O people, is his emphatic warning. In anticipation of the days of divine justice, for the promised hour is now come, beware lest ye fail to apprehend its import and be accounted among the erring. The day is approaching, he similarly has written, when the faithful will behold the day star of justice shining in its full splendor from the day spring of glory. The shame I was made to bear, he significantly remarks, hath uncovered the glory with which the whole of creation had been invested, and through the cruelties I have endured, the day star of justice hath manifested itself and shed its splendor upon men. The world, he again has written, is in great turmoil, and the minds of its people are in a state of utter confusion. We entreat the Almighty that he may graciously illuminate them with the glory of his justice and enable them to discover that which will be profitable unto them at all times and under all conditions. And again, there can be no doubt whatever that if the day star of justice, which the clouds of tyranny have obscured, were to shed its light upon men, the face of the earth would be completely transformed. God be praised, Abdul Baha in his turn exclaims, the sun of justice hath risen above the horizon of Baha'u'llah. For in his tablets the foundations of such a justice have been laid as no mind hath from the beginning of creation conceived. The canopy of existence, he further explains, resteth upon the pole of justice and not of forgiveness, and the life of mankind dependeth on justice and not on forgiveness. 
Small wonder, therefore, that the author of the Baha'i Revelation should have chosen to associate the name and title of that house, which is to be the crowning glory of his administrative institutions, not with forgiveness, but with justice, to have made justice the only basis and the permanent foundation of his most great peace, and to have proclaimed it in his hidden words, as the best beloved of all things in his sight. It is to the American believers particularly that I feel urged to direct this fervent plea to ponder in their hearts the implications of this moral rectitude and to uphold with heart and soul and uncompromisingly both individually and collectively this sublime standard the standard of which justice is so essential and potent an element.